Okay, moving right along, uh, we're going to be uh, introducing our entrepreneur of the year. Um, and uh, the prize goes to... David Zhu. Uh, he is the CTO and the co-founder of Intraproid, now called Divide. made some notes on uh, David's uh, career and al also uh, the progress at uh, Divide. Uh, Divide is a really young, uh, it's really young, uh, but it's raised a tremendous amount of money uh, from some very big uh, corporate strategic investors. Uh, it's already raised 25 million in two rounds. It was formed in 2010. Uh, it's an interesting company in that it has um, a base in Hong Kong, a base in New York, and a base in uh, London. Uh, and David is right here in Hong Kong. Um, so <clears throat> what this company does, and I'll let David describe it a little bit more because he's the technologist here, uh, but it actually uh, divides your smartphone into, um, into two separate sections um, so that you can be doing your corporate work and doing your personal email at the same time and neither side knows. Okay, good, I got that right. Um, so these, uh, this startup originated uh, from uh, three techies at Morgan Stanley. Uh, all of you were working in the IT department at Morgan Stanley and, and you saw a need for this kind of product. And so you spun it out, um, spun it out of that and um, it's now uh, been downloaded, hmm, how many times? Um, how many times has it been downloaded already? Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but I think you know if you could just look at Google Play or the App Store, I'm sure the numbers on there. Okay, but it's in the millions, right? At least uh, twenty million. I'm not sure if we've actually disclosed. Oh, you haven't the actually <laughs> disclosed that. Okay, all right. Um, well, um, it's it's one of the top hits in the Apple App Store, uh, isn't it? Yes, I'm, I'm a, I think we're, we're highly ranked in the, um, certainly in the enterprise productivity um, category. Okay. Good. Can you uh, describe how this technology works and why, why you thought it was a, a good idea to get into this business and uh, how it's going? Sure. So, so I guess maybe just to give a quick, um, I guess, background context on how we all started. I mean, I, well, I guess first of all, I, I want to say I'm extremely honored for this award and actually um, I don't think it's myself. Certainly I think I want to thank my co-founders actually, so there's no way I'm personally the entrepreneur of the year and I think there's the great team behind everything we do so it's you know I, th I think a lot of the credit goes goes to them for um, this award um, so so I guess then just speak about the history so you're right so so me and my co-founders we all worked in Morgan Stanley IT for better part of a decade and actually um, and as much as it's dark days for Viper now I think everybody here remembers you know for 10 years they absolutely dominated the enterprise mobile space right I mean they were known as crackberries for, for a very very good reason um, and and so so when we were at Morgan, we actually wrote a lot of software for these smart devices, right? And I think along the way, um, you know, we try to push the limit of the platform. Um, we were always trying to build new apps, and and for the most part, you know, BlackBerry I think have always remained kind of be a closed ecosystem, to be honest, right? I think the APIs that they offered, the um, you know kind of additional service that I had to build was has always been limited. Um, so when Android first came out. Um, that was actually when we decided to basically take the plunge and start the company because I think for the first time, um, you know, there was a platform where it's open enough, kind of like I, I guess also what Xiaomi saw, right? That you can really go in and fundamentally change the guts of the operating system. Um, you know, you can really deliver a user experience, a work profile that's you know completely different from any other phone that has come ever before it. Um, and and I guess you know. To chronicle our early times, you know, when we started, I think Android. I mean, obviously, iPhone 
came out before Android, I think, you know, iPhone was off to a fantastic start. And actually, when we started, we choose to focus on Android first because that was the platform that was open enough for us to, you know, make all of our major kind of technology innovations. And actually, at the time, it was difficult for us to raise money because a lot of people were saying, well, why don't you guys do iPhone first, right? Actually, Android at that time was actually extremely unproven. People didn't think that they had a chance to actually go out and kind of gain the huge overall market share that they actually have now. So when we started three and a half, four years ago, that was actually a, a controversial position that we took to start off Android first. But, um, you know, I think everything turned out okay. So Now it's in uh, both operating systems. Yes. So um, today, Divide works on both Android and iOS. But um, for us, iOS support didn't come until within the last year, actually. So, so we were Android only for a very long time. So your original backing for the company uh, came from Google Ventures, right? Yes. So um, uh, so how, how did that happen? I mean, it's not every Hong Kong-based startup that gets uh, funding from the U.S. and from Google Ventures as well. How did that happen? Yeah, so so that's that's another good story. Um, so so actually our, so there's been a couple of rounds, I'm sure, with, with every startup's history. So for us, our initial round was actually a convertible debt, which I'm sure everybody here is probably familiar with the instrument by this point. And that was actually, um, I think we were lucky, it was from our prior bosses at Morgan Stanley, you know, people that were managing directors that actually ran the IT and the telco group. So they knew us, knew our track record, was had crazy enough or confident enough to say, hey, you know, you guys, I'll trust you guys to go off and, and, and do this and here's a big check while we're at it. So so for us, it was actually very fortunate to be able to get that initial early kind of bootstrap money. Um, interestingly, so Google actually turned us down the first time we wanted to get money. Um, and, and, and there's there, there's a fun story behind that because I think because um, originally as I mentioned when we started um, we played much deeper at the technology so we we're actually working at the operating system levels because our original business model was like well we'll basically we'll secure Android we'll you know basically create custom ROMs or basically do operating system level enhancements and our idea was that you know we'll sell this technology back to actual manufacturers for example like Samsung or HTC right um, and I think a lot of the early feedback we got was that that's okay, but if, you know, if you actually talk to corporate customers, nobody wants to flash their phones to basically run software. It's kind of crazy, right? Um, so that was the feedback we got, and that was kind of why Google turned us down the first time, actually. So then, um, you know, to actually kind of, I guess, strive for that product market fit, which I think every startup tries to do, we kind of took a hard look at our technologies. You know what? Is it actually possible to do what we do, not at the OS level, but actually bring it up a level and actually have it be an app? and yet still have all the benefits and all the security that you would expect from like an OS level framework to accomplish this. So, um, you know, we, we were able to do that. And then actually then we went back to Google and says, okay, well, we kind of took your suggestion and, and did it. And they were like, okay, well, then, you know, you guys seem to, you know, be um, the type of, I guess, founders or, you know, entrepreneurs that actually can listen to good advice and actually kind of, you know, not necessarily be dogmatic in kind of how you want to do your product technology, but I think, you know, try to stay true to the vision and yet have an implementation that's actually can have more, much more readily commercial success. And at that point, you know, Rich, um, actually Rich Miner is the co-founder of Android. Um, and then he's, he's the guy from Google Ventures, which um, did the deal. So. And then from there, you were able to raise money from Qualcomm Ventures and, and some other corporate strategics as well. Yes. So our primary backers are Google Ventures, Qualcomm Ventures, and Comcast Ventures in the States. That, that's uh, that's quite a, a record. I mean, I, I think um, there's many other Hong Kong-based startups that wish they could be in your shoes and be able to get these kind of investors. Um, and do you have any advice for other entrepreneurs here in Hong Kong about how, how you did that? Yeah, so so I, I think for the Hong Kong community specifically, um, I think Hong Kong is actually a fantastic test bed for a lot of mobile technologies, right? Um, you know, I think... If you look at all the research reports, I think the per capita, of, you know, phone population here is at least two to one, right? Every person has at least two, if not more, phones, um, and the networks here are fantastic. Right? I mean, you know, extremely high-speed networks, awesome coverage over the place. Um, one funny story I always like to tell is that in Hong Kong, you get used to, you know, talking in the elevators, in the subways, right? And then I go to New York City, and people look at me like I'm crazy when I try to do these things because you just get into the habit. Um, so, so I think Hong Kong is only fantastic for that. I think the challenge for a startup coming out of Hong Kong is actually to think bigger, right? Because I think the, um, the the problem is Hong Kong, even though it's a great city of seven million, which is a very, very nice local test bed, but unfortunately, I think as far as the, the venture capitalists are concerned, you know, that's not big enough to actually fit into the traditional VC model because 
like to the early gentleman's point, you know, they need the 10x, 50x, 100x, and you can't get that with a with a local seven million user base. So you're in a very competitive um, marketplace. Um, can you uh, talk about what is it like to be in this, you know, highly fast moving, uh, hyper competitive market, and how your what your survival tactics are? Yes. So so I think. This is also one of the reasons why I am in mobile. I think this is also one of the reasons why a lot of people are in mobile. Because, for example, for us on a recruiting front, just just to take, just use an example, right? You can't go out and say I want a mobile developer with 10 years experience because you know what? To be honest, these platforms, Android, iOS, they weren't around 10 years ago, right? So, so you know, not even from a talent perspective. I guess you know, to your point about business strategies, I think yes, the market moves extremely quickly. Um, for example, even the term BYOD, which I think hopefully everybody here has heard of, right? Um, you know, we've really been able to kind of latch on to that term and kind of that transformation which has happened in the enterprise now moving to a post library world, right? But, you know, that term, I would say, probably only really came about in the last year or so, right? So, for, you know, for the, for the first three years of existence, that term wasn't even around, right? So, um, so I guess, you know, it is, I guess, timing certainly helps, right? I think it's, um, and also I guess having a little bit of foresight and, and vision doesn't hurt either. So you have three founders, and one is in London, one is in New York, and you're here in Hong Kong. How, how does that work? Um, nobody sleeps, <laughs> um, I think is the short answer. Um, if you actually look at a, a time chart, you'll see that there's only about three reasonable hours that we can actually all get together and talk, and that's somewhere between 9 p.m. Hong Kong to about midnight. Um, that turns out to be, you know, early morning in the U.S. and and somewhere in the middle of the day for, for New York. I'm sorry for, for 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 London. So you can argue maybe I get the short end of the stick, but you know what? As a you know engineer by trade, I'm kind of you know crazy night out anyway, so it's actually not a big deal. Um, so so I think for us, it's definitely a lot of um, I guess remote collaboration, right? And I think again, I think here we were very lucky, and I actually don't recommend a lot of first time entrepreneurs do this because I would say it's crazy to have three founders on three continents when you start. I think for us it worked because um, because all of us actually worked together at Morgan for you know close close to a decade. So even even there we were in separate offices. For example, I was in the Silicon Valley in the Bay Area, Andrew's in New York, Alex was in New York and then he moved to London. So we already had that kind of prior work relationship in history. So we knew how to work even though we were remote, right? But that's you know got many, many years of history and just you know, professional and working relationship behind it. Like I said, for, for, for other first-time founders, I, I personally do not actually recommend that model. Um, so. Besides the time zone challenges, uh, what has been the biggest hurdle uh, that your startup has had to overcome? Yeah, so, so actually then just going back to the earlier point, right? I think the one of the naive mistakes I think we made, to be honest, is that I think because the three of us were able to work, you know, kind of literally like 24 hours, because I think Early on, we joked that it was great because anytime there's a fire, right, we, we knew that there was one founder awake somewhere in the world that can basically literally take care of it. So, like, you know, so that was fantastic for us. But then I think one big challenge for us, which I think we're in the midst of solving, is that, you know, as a company, we grew fairly quickly, right? So we're about 70 people globally now, right? Um, and I think, like I said, so one naive mistake that we did was that we just assumed the rest of the company could work the way that we did. Right, um, and I think you know culturally, I think it's been that way. I think you know all of our staff has, for example, our Hong Kong staff, our London staff, our New York staff. I mean, yeah, they do late night calls, they work around the clock, but um, I think the cost, of course, right, is that I think people do get burned out actually, right? And I think that for us, it was kind of that naive, I guess, just expectation that well, because we work this way, that everyone else will just work this way too, right? And I think that, to be honest, I think now that you know we we're maturing as a as a startup. Um, being able to put together better ways for people to actually work across the three different regions has been a real challenge. So uh, what's the outlook for Divide? <clears throat> what's your next big milestone? What's the next big objective for the company? Yeah, so, so um, you know, we just raised the, the um, Series B that announced a couple months ago, so we are definitely, you know, full on ramping into sales cycles. Um, and. And to date, we've actually primarily focused on selling in North America and Europe, largely because, you know, given our corporate backgrounds and, you know, just we, we know at least how to sell in English, right? Um, I think the next milestone for us is actually um, taking the product more global, actually. Because I think people 
well, first of all, people are surprised when we have engineering here in Hong Kong because I think that's not something that a lot of people see, to be honest, right? But I think um, since we are here in Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong obviously has some very, very large business, and I think APAC is only a huge, huge market for us. So I think the next step for us is how do we take divide the product and actually, you know, expand internationally, globally here in Asia, which we're probably going to do next year. So. Are you leveraging the Pearl River connection? Um. Not so much, right? But there was a joke that, yeah, well, if you ever want to get into the hardware business, this is definitely the right place to be. All right, because you talked about the talent and the issue of finding talent and how difficult it is because you're growing so fast. I'm just curious about where you're finding this talent. Does Hong Kong have enough of the talent pool that you need? Um, so, so Hong Kong definitely has some fantastic universities, right? Certainly some of the top ranked in Asia, right? So I think for us, um, we have been able to find some fantastic talent here in Hong Kong. Um, but I will say, I mean, to be honest, I think hiring and growing talent is, is difficult in any part of the world. For example, in Silicon Valley, I'm sure everybody knows that, you know, the going rate for, sal you know, for, for, for software engineer is, is quite expensive. And also, yeah, I think it's compounded by the fact that there's just a lot more interesting technology companies to work for, right? I think here in Hong Kong, I think on one hand, we have a lot less competition. So, you know, there's not that many startups ultimately, right? There's not that many technology startups here in Hong Kong. Um, so I think we have been able to differentiate in terms of, you know, the, the kind of work that we were able to provide to people. And I think that the staff that I have working for me really genuinely do enjoy mobile technology and, you know, they, they're, they're basically hackers, right? Um, so, so, and there's not that many places you can hack in Hong Kong. Um, so. Well, you started out as a hacker, right? Um, Is that right? <laughs> Yes, so so I think I have the dubious distinction of having hacked on every major mobile operating system since you know like Windows CE or if you remember the original Palm OS back in the day, right? So um, it's 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 been a very very pleasant, you know, 15 years or whatever it is, um, kind of watch the whole industry transform and and and, and morph. So great. Well, uh, thank you, David. Thank you so much, and congratulations.